Sick of eating chilli with rice. So I said, let's have jacket potatoes. It was bonfire night. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we shall bring you the conclusion of the LDO 2.4 Revision D Voron build. First of all, folks, for those of you who have been following along this series, the machine is alive. It's alive! It's alive! We have now got the machine fully assembled. We have sorted out all the firmware. We have installed Clipper. We have run some configurations and actually done a couple of test prints. We will put these test prints on screen. Let me give you a bit of a, a rundown on what I've done and how I've reached this point. So as some of you will have seen on the previous episode, part three, we had the machine assembled. I do believe that we hadn't the cable chains and there was a couple of other bits that we'd had to like wire from the stealth burner back to the board and whatever else. So we connected the Nighthawk tool board through the cable chain down into the base of the machine, simply plugged that into the USB breakout board really really simple to do that as say the nighthawk tool head board is an absolute godsend to be fair the wiring of it is simplicity you have one plug to plug in another plug at the other end and that is this done with the machine kit we got a 32 gigabyte sandisk micro sd card onto that sd card i used the raspberry pi imager followed the instructions on the build guide and basically put a clipper image onto the Raspberry Pi. We then popped that into the Pi, booted up the machine and started to compile firmware. Needless to say, I was very, very surprised the Leviathan mainboard comes pre-flashed with Clipper. So you do not need to flash the mainboard with firmware because it is already pre-installed on the board. I know some people can get a bit intimidated by building firmware and, and flashing it and whatever else. But in this instance, it's already pre-installed on the board so all I had to do from that point onwards then was to actually create my config file. For the config file for this machine, I literally went off the base configuration config file that LDO provide. And we will put a link to this in the description. But basically, the LDO pre-configured file has various options that you comment out as needed so this machine comes in a, a number of different variant sizes so the config file covers all of those variants from 250 build plate 300 mil build plate to 350 build plate and it tells you step by step in the config file which one if you're using to uncomment so it becomes functional in the actual config file i proceeded to do that i kept everything else stock i then powered up the machine checked everything was working as it should do and here we are it didn't really cause me any issues at all to get the machine powered on and moving the issues that i encountered were solely to do with the tap now the machine comes with the the clicky and the uh, omron probe so if you're going to use the stock configuration you will be absolutely good to go straight out the bat the tap i had to just jiggle around with a couple of bits of the config file remove the z make virtual end stops that type of thing but again if you do fit a tap there is quite a lot of online resources to help you do this once i'd found the file looked at what i needed to amend i got it up and running and it works perfectly from that point then i just checked all the belts were tensioned i ran a couple of homing cycles i did the quad gantry leveling now one thing i noticed with the quad gantry leveling and it could be a really really simple easy fix if the gantry is too far out of kilter, it basically flagged an error in Clipper. So what I proceeded to do, instead of messing around with any configuration or, or anything like that, powered the machine off. I basically got a steel rule and I measured that I had it pretty much parallel to the base plate in all four corners. I then proceeded to do the quad gantry level again. 
bingo, worked fine. It was just too far out of tolerance to be able to, to do it successfully. There will be a really simple setting or value that you type into the config file to compensate for that. But as I say, ultimately, the gantry is never going to be that far out. So I didn't see it to be a huge problem. Slices. So all I did for this, I went onto Walker, selected the bore on 2.4 with the 350 mil build plate. I loaded in the profile and then literally sliced a Voron cube, plint, away it went. The first print turned out very, very nicely. There was some very, very slight under extrusion on one layer. I couldn't quite put my finger on whether that was my, my slicer settings. I think I increased the standard PLA temperature a little bit. Proceeded to print another one. The other one came out absolutely perfectly. I also ran input shaper there is quite a comprehensive guide on how to do this that involves SSH into the Raspberry Pi uploading an input shaper vial and then basically you use WinSCP to download the actual graphs you can then read the graphs pick out the best tolerance input that value into your config file input shaping done and overall I've run it currently total stock speeds and I've not had any major, major issues. I mean, this is still a work in progress. We will tune it, but basically from out of the box to where we are now, which we have a fully functioning 3D printer, everything works absolutely as it should do. The overall quality of everything, I can't emphasize this enough. The quality of all the components that are included in this kit are faultless. I mean, the only things that are gonna hold the builder back is the actual quality of your printed parts provided you take your time you follow the recommended voron guide for your print settings and whatever else you shouldn't really have a problem i mean all of these parts we printed out of eSun abs plus front cover for the stealth burner was printed on a p1s just because we wanted a nice hexagon pattern on the front but that isn't a necessity all the other parts were printed out on a prusa mark 4 enclosed stock Prusa slicer settings all of the infill was at 50 percent we did four walls thick five bottom layers five top layers for every single part we've printed out on this machine and yeah this is the result we still have a bit of tidying up to do like the trim the belts off and tidy them up and whatever but i wanted to run a bit to see if we needed to make any adjustment before i finally snip these off and then obviously we have the panels to fit but if you're only printing with pla or pet g you can leave absolutely as is really really happy with it i thoroughly enjoy building it this has been a part-time project within my normal working day so i've literally grabbed half an hour here done a little bit there i haven't sat constantly for 20 hours straight and assembled the machine it has been built in little bits and pieces over a number of weeks but please feel free if you've got any questions or you're not sure about anything to drop them in the comments box below uh, and we'll do our utmost to answer you as quickly as possible or drop us an email. The link for the email will be in the description for the website and everything else. Ultimately, I, I'm really impressed by it. I think it's a worthy investment for anybody who's seriously into 3D. If you're brand new into 3D printing, you've never owned a 3D printer before, this machine is definitely not the right choice for you. If you are a seasoned 3D printer, or you're relatively experienced in 3D printing, and you have quite a good understanding of assembly processes, using tools. I mean, it does involve you jumping from the Voron build guide to the LDO guide, just to cross-reference the two. There's nothing really in this that's going to catch you out. Ultimately, you've built the machine, you know how it works, you can maintain it, you can make modifications to it. I think that about wraps up this episode. If you want to see this product or the other LDL products that we stock, please check out the link in the description. We sell this kit, we sell components, we sell the Trident kit. If you would like to see this machine in the flesh or meet the team, we will be attending Smurf Rip Rap Festival this December at Manchester Metropolitan. There'll be us there and lots of other influential players in the market swing by check us out have a chat please be sure to like subscribe and share we will see you on the next one
Bye bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.